What's up, everybody? For those who are just tuning in, my name is Sam Tielemans, and I'm doing a five-part video series to help you understand the five of the most powerful strategies to overcome depression and anxiety for good. And today, we're going to talk about the most painful things that we can ever tell ourselves, and we're all guilty of it at some point. So I want you to all be aware of what these three most awful words are that we can say to ourselves so we can avoid them and do something differently instead. So those three words, again, that we're mostly all guilty of are, I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not fun enough. I'm not, I don't make enough. When we think about ourselves as falling short and not being enough in some way, it's devastating to our self-esteem. And when we feel a low degree of self-esteem, we get depressed, we get anxious, we want to isolate, we want to push people away, we get angrier. It just, it's so bad for us to think of ourselves as not enough or failing in some way, yet so often we all do this. And so I want to share with you the strategy to be able to help you fight against this false belief so you can do something differently when that shot thought shows up because our brain thinks and there's no way to stop thoughts and when that thought just shows up there's something that we can do to get it out and empower ourselves and so the strategy that i want to share with you is a, a, a tool called self-compassion and i think so often self-compassion is a very misunderstood thing and people minimize it because it sounds kind of like oh you know just be nice to yourself be kind to yourself but there is so much research to, to support how important it is for us to be compassionate with ourselves and to be able to be soft in how we respond to our own behavior and our own thoughts. So let me explain this a little bit further. Self-compassion is not giving yourself permission to do dumb things or to hurt other people or to be negligent. It doesn't like get you off the hook. It doesn't make you not accountable. It's the opposite. Self-compassion is just how we respond to our own behavior and thoughts. We follow it up instead. So for instance, a, a negative response would be, uh, let's say an example. Okay, let's say I yell at my kids. If I yell at my kids, uh, an unkind, not compassionate response would be, I'm a bad person. Right? We make this meaning out of a behavior and we make it about ourselves which if I think to myself, I'm a bad dad, I'm gonna feel depressed, I'm gonna feel anxious, I'm gonna be, beat myself up even further, I'm gonna to wanna to avoid my kids altogether. And so these negative thoughts that we have or the negative meaning that we make out of a behavior just devastates us. And so a self-compassionate response would be, for instance, if I yell at my kids, I would say, I wouldn't say I'm a bad dad, I would say, okay, my fuse went, was short that night. And then I would think, okay, if my fuse was short, what can I do tomorrow night to make sure it's not short? Or how can I show up for my kids? How can I prepare myself when I come home from work to show up for my kids in the best way possible and have positive energy to be able to help them feel loved and important? I would ask myself those questions instead of saying I'm a bad parent and then I'm even more sensitive and upset and then I go upstairs and I don't wanna to talk to anybody. Again, I would think to myself, I would say to myself, I had a short fuse that night. That's very different than being hard on myself. So another thought. So um, again, this, the, these techniques that I'm sharing with you, these are the very same things that help me overcome my own depression. So like the depression or anxiety that I ever felt is gone because I know how to do this process differently now. So I want to share this with you. A part of what happened for me is if I would be at a place and like, let's say a negative thought or a judgmental thought would come into my head. Like, I don't want to be a judgmental person. I don't want to be somebody who's critical because I know we're all trying to fight our own battles. But when I had those thoughts that I couldn't control, they just showed up, I would think to myself, like, ah, I'm, a, I'm a bad person for having this thought. I'm a judgmental bad person. And if I think of myself as a bad judgmental person, like, how do, like what do I do about that? I'm just, that's just who I am. But the truth is that I'm not a bad judgmental person if I have a negative thought cross my mind. And so what I started to do was I would say, negative thoughts don't mean anything. Judgmental thoughts don't mean anything about me. It means I had a judgmental thought come into my mind. What do I want to do with that thought? Do I want to harbor that thought? Do I want to tell my other friends about it? Do I want to gossip? No, I don't. What I would do instead is I would think, okay, what, what could I find about this person that is attractive, that is kind, that is nice, something that I admire? And I would be able to separate myself from the thought. If we can't separate ourselves from our thoughts and our behavior, we end up being very hard on ourselves. It destroys our self-esteem. And we want to just isolate and push people away or numb out as a result. 
And so what I would encourage you to do, again, I want to give you actionable steps to be able to implement this stuff because I know it works. It's honestly saved me so much pain. So what I want to encourage you to do is, number one, start to notice when you have these negative thoughts. And what do you tell yourself? Do you tell yourself you're a bad person or that you're a bad parent or you're irresponsible? We want to first notice these negative thoughts. And then secondly, we want to challenge them with something that's different. What's another perspective you can take? And one of the most helpful ways to think about this is if you think, how would I talk to a friend if they came to me and told me the same thing? So for instance, if I yell at my kids and, and um, some, a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, I yelled at my kids last night. What I would tell him would be very different than usually what I would tell myself. So I have to train myself to think in those terms. And I would say to him probably, listen, we all have bad nights. It's okay. I, I know you love your kids. I've seen you interact with them in such positive ways. You know, we all have struggles sometimes. What, you know, what can you do tomorrow to make it better? That frame will change how you feel completely because that empowers you to be able to move forward. So I want to encourage you, like I said, to find out what your negative thoughts are. How do you, how do you associate those negative things to yourself? And then start to challenge those in ways that leave you feeling empowered which then so quickly removes the depression and anxiety because then it's no longer about you. It's just the behavior that you have to correct. And we all have lots of that that we have to do along the way. So again, good luck. I hope you can apply this and move forward with it. And um, I look forward to talking with you on the next video.